Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today I'm going to be continuing our morph introduction series where I give you guys the very, very basics, first things you need to know about each morph in corn snakes. I have done most of the morphs up to this point, but we still have some left to do. If you'd like to see the rest, I will link the playlist up above. Before we jump in, I want to thank all the members on this channel who have helped to make everything possible. You guys are amazing. Uh, if anybody else would like to become a member, you can click join under any video to do so. You get different perks based on the different levels. So we have everything from you getting the emotes all the way up to being able to be in a Discord server. And there's a lot of other things in between. So if you're interested in that, please go check that out. I have a website, sarahsnakeshop.com, where I sell corn snakes and corn snake accessories. I also have most of my corn snakes up on Morph Market, so if you'd like to check me out there, you can do that as well. All of these things are going to be linked in the description below. I also want to mention that I will be vending at the Show Me Reptile Expo in Fort Wayne, Indiana on February 10th of 2024. So if you guys would like to come out and see me, I will be there. I'm also going to be getting some custom tie-dye t-shirts ready to go for people picking up at the show. So if you would like a tie-dye t-shirt or just a regular t-shirt, then you can order those on my website and pick them up instead of having them shipped if you would rather do that. But I can tie-dye these any color combination that you want. And once these are gone, once like this style is gone, I'm not gonna have this style ever again. So if you are like interested in getting one of the OG Sarah Snake Shop t-shirts, this is the last time to be able to do that. And thank you to Reptilinks for helping to support this channel as well. If you guys would like to get a discount on some of this awesome food for your snakes, you can use my code sarahsnake27 at checkout at reptilinks.com. Also, if you like corn snake content, I make a corn snake based video every single week. So please hit that subscribe button if that's something that you are interested in. Today, we are mainly focusing on morphs that start with S. So we're doing scaleless, stripe, sun kiss and sunrise in this video but i'm also going to touch on peach since i forgot to put that in the p video so i'm actually going to start with peach today peach is a slightly lesser known mutation it is now known to be incomplete dominant i'm not going to go over all the details of what all of that means but basically it is easier to get it to pass on than something like a melanistic which you have to breed multiple generations to get a visual uh, so something like a melanistic is going to be very similar to like the ginger gene in people where um, you can have two parents that are not gingers but if ginger has been on both sides of the family there's a possibility of getting that ginger child and that's how most corn snake mutations work but some of them are a little bit nicer uh, and easier to pass on than others and peach is one of those if you have a visual peach peach will continue to pass on there is a homozygous version which just means it did come from both parents and that's usually going to be a slightly brighter more peachy color and then there's the sort of normal version of this which is uh, has some of that peachy color but it's just not quite as bright. Peach is a relatively old mutation especially for how uncommon it is. It originated in Rich Zukowski's collection uh, way back before the mid 2000s or so but in the mid 2000s is when it started to be noticed that it was a little bit different and people started to actually try to work with it although it wasn't until like the late 2010s that we actually started to figure out that it was a separate mutation that was separate from the original morphs in the breeding. The original morphs in the very first breeding were caramel, hypo, and lavender. And uh, for a long, long time, it was just thought to be a regular type of hypo, or maybe it was a part of something that caramel passed on, or maybe it was something that lavender passed on. But turns out it's something completely different all on its own. And uh, we've done a lot of work in this hobby to get that proven out. Peach is considered a hypomelanistic type, which just means it takes away a little bit of that melanin instead of it being completely jet black like it is on a normal corn snake it just makes that black kind of turn into more of a tan uh, or maybe a brown color instead but it also adds a nice layer of this peachy tone onto the snake uh, a lot of blood reds that have this look very very dark uh, very dark red blood reds so on top of being a hypo melanistic mutation it is also adds a little bit extra of that pinky peachy pigment as well now that i'm done with the one and only p that i forgot in the p video i'm going to move on to the s's we've already done r's in the ghr video again those are all going to be up in that 
playlist that I'm gonna link in the corner. The next morph that we're gonna talk about is Scalus, and Scalus is pretty straightforward. It's snakes that don't have scales, and that's not entirely true. Some of these snakes, in fact, most of the corn snakes, at least, that have the scalus mutation, do have some scales left on their belly. They're normally a little funky looking. They're not quite a normal size or shape, but they are there. And this is why we aren't worried too much about scaleless corn snakes being able to hatch out of the eggs because their egg tooth is actually a scale. And in some species, like in ball pythons, they do not always have egg teeth. And so you have to cut their eggs open in order to get them. But with corn snakes, we don't really have to worry about that because that egg tooth can still form. Um, our corn snakes being scaleless, they are not completely scaleless usually. Usually you will see scales still around the mouth and on the belly, and sometimes even scattered a little bit on the body. Usually uh, it's, it's more concentrated near the tail, but not always. There is a bit of controversy on whether or not scaleless should be raised in the hobby. Is it a healthy mutation? And we haven't seen much evidence that they are unhealthy as long as they are kept in the proper manner. They do have a tendency to dehydrate a little bit more easily, so it's important to make sure that they have that extra hydration. And since their skin is a little soft and wrinkly, you just want to make sure to limit any sharp things in their enclosure. But otherwise, they make great pets and they can live long, healthy lives. The next mutation is Stripe, which is also pretty straightforward. Stripe has stripes that go all the way from the neck all the way down to the tail. There are multiple different Stripe types. I don't want to get into all of them right now, but one of the other ones is Terrazzo. And we talk about that in the tea video. So I'm going to not completely talk about that here right now. But just so you know, there are multiple different types of stripe. We just have one that we call stripe and the others have different names. Stripe was originally found in France and then eventually imported to the U.S. Uh, and it is believed that they originated in Oka tea lines. Now the next morph I'm going to talk about is Sunkissed. Sunkissed is a hypo mutation, but it is also a pattern mutation. So we talked about hypomelanistic earlier in this video. That basically just means, again, that those dark blacks are going to be turned into a brown or tan or gray instead. They're just not going to be quite as intense usually. But Sunkist also alters the pattern so that there are actually fewer saddles on average overall and they're a little bit bigger and usually kind of more squared off in a way. They also have what I would call their signature cheek pattern where the pattern on their cheeks actually is more up above their eye and the cheeks themselves are usually white or very light colored. A lot of people can tell just by the face of a sunkist that it's a sunkist. There's not a whole lot of morphs out there that you can just look at the side of their face and know exactly what morph it is and sunkist is one of those. Sunkist originated in Kathy Love's Okatee stock many many years ago. It was one of the first hypos that was found. I want to say it was maybe the third or maybe t possibly fourth type of hypo but I can't remember exactly when it was found. The only exception to the sunkist being a hypo rule is sometimes they actually don't reduce that black that much. Sometimes that black stays really, really dark. Technically, we still say it's a hypotype, even though that happens sometimes. Uh, but just kind of keep in mind, just because something doesn't appear to be a hypotype, that doesn't mean it's not a sunkist of some kind. Also, just one weird thing to mention, sunkist when mixed with motley often does not look like a motley. Uh, we talked about motley in the M and P video, where motley usually creates these circles that go down the back. Uh, and that's not all always the case if you mix motley with sunkissed. Sunkissed really likes to take over the pattern so a lot of times a sunkissed motley will kind of just look like a very cleanly patterned sunkissed and have very little to no trace of that motley being there at all including sometimes also having belly checkers despite being motley. And the last morph on this list is Sunrise. Sunrise is a mutation that sort of slows the development of colors on the snake a little bit. So when a sunrise hatches out it has hardly any pigment in it at all, especially in the like reds and yellows. And if you have an amelanistic type, which is the most common type that we see in Sunrise, they hatch out almost completely white. They kind of look like snows that just have a little extra color on them. And then that color very, very quickly develops into very, very, very bright oranges and reds over the next couple of sheds very quickly. And this is kind of what happens when the snakes are actually developing in the egg for the last week or so. When the snake is developing in the egg, that that pigment doesn't really start coming in until the later part of 
the egg incubation cycle. Basically what Sunrise does is it kind of disallows a lot of those pigments from developing at all until after the snake has hatched and had a few sheds and then that color comes in really really quickly and then it kind of ends up looking like a regular amelanistic or just a normal uh, after all of those colors come in. Now we have seen in the amelanistic stripe and motley versions of this though that after the snake reaches a certain age uh, some of that pigment will actually start to leave the snake's body again and so you end up with these little white flecks all over the body of just like no pigment and that can continue for the rest of the snake's life losing a little bit of pigment every time it sheds. Sunrise is relatively uncommon and it's not super popular just because it doesn't affect things that much but it is a very interesting morph to consider if you are looking for just something a little bit different. So I'm just going to go over a quick recap of all the morphs we went over. We went over Peach, which is a hypomelanistic type that's incomplete dominant and also adds some nice like pinks to the snakes that it's mixed with. We went over Scaleless, which isn't completely scaleless most of the time, at least not in corn snakes, but it's the closest thing to completely scaleless that we are going to get. We went over Stripe, which once again is self-explanatory. We got those stripes going all the way down the body. Uh, but again, just remember that there are different types of stripes that we have not talked about yet. And of course, we talked about Sunkissed, the other hypotype that is recessive, but it also changes the pattern of the snake. And last but not least, we talked about Sunrise, the morph that has very little color when it is born and then very very quickly gains a lot of color and then once that snake is older sometimes that color even starts fading away again i hope that you enjoyed this video thank you for watching again if you'd like to become a member check those perks out down below please like subscribe and share and i'll see you in a new video soon